What is up, everybody? Flame with Moody here, playing more Pyre. It's going pretty good. What is this down here? Is that a person? Is that a small person kneeling at the gate? Never noticed that before. It's kind of sketchy. I dig it. Um. Oh, also, these are all the sigils of all the teams. That's really cool. I should pay more attention to the things that are happening on screen sometimes, is the lesson here. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, sorry if I'm distracted, but Logan Paul's about to get his butt kicked by Floyd Mayweather, and so I'm kind of searching for... Uh, uh, sorry, I just read that Mayweather is 50-0. Um, he hasn't lost once in a professional match. And Logan Paul, in case you were wondering, is uh, currently at 0-1 in his professional career. Um, neither will wear headgear. Oh my god, Logan Paul's about to die. I'll let you know when I find out when Lo Logan Paul dies. Um, but that's happening tonight, and I'm just kind of... I'm not, I'm not excited enough to, like, pay to see it. But I'm excited to hear about it. Um... Anyways, that's not relevant right now. What's relevant right now is that we continue our journey as our cycles of uh, liberation grow shorter and shorter within each world. I do so hate uh, to thusly contact you, O oh reader. Uh, Yet an awful rumor reached me recently. It seems to have caused you so much trouble that you are lagging. I apologize that the rumor is so that troubling. You have within your retinue. A traitor. Oh God, we're introducing a traitor element. Oh, to the Commonwealth. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm not gonna you tell you. Yes, that's traitor, true. But would you? I thought you meant traitor to me. I trust your time within the downside would have taught you that. Is that it, or do you got? All right, that's it. Cool. Yeah. No. F you, buddy. <laughs> like. You rise after a fitful night of slumber, however, THE VOICE! Described within the book, it calls to you during the rites and reminds you of your exile, which thus far has reached at you only in the rites, has found its way into your sleep as well, you shake free of it. The time at Moonlight Alcove has made everyone restless, the group is eager to set forth at your command. Um, I think we determined who we're fighting next, but I've forgotten, so I guess we'll just find out when we get there, huh? Man, I really thought it was going to be like one of these people is legit going to betray you. And like, there's a chance that you've already sent the traitor on ahead of you and you don't even get to know that until it's too late. Um, either that or the storyline just changes so the traitor is different depending on who's still with you. But um, I'm glad that's not the case. The hidden glade of Lu is nigh impossible to find on foot, though there lies below us, protected even now by the enchantment of Lu's glory in Hundred Mines. I understand the river named for him is rather famous in her commonwealth. The mouth of that river, Sclorian, opens wide not very far from here. It was there that the limbless Arizek was defeated, turning the region lush and livable, at least for certain denizens, although, of course, not everyone believes this. Don't you dare run into me! I see you up there! Your adversaries, the Tempers, must be working to find their way there even now. Good fortune in your right against them, reader. And... God. Oi, mates! Look at what ran into us again! You kicked us down before, but now we're gonna pay you back! You know, I gotta say, I kinda like his style there. Come right on crashing into us like you ain't even care. That's pretty good. Keep telling my mates here we ought to do the same. You did. You did do the same. You literally just ran into me. I was standing completely still. Also, this is our destination, I didn't realize. But we can at least take another look at Wakingwood. As the wagon soars across the skies above Wakingwood, you notice Wolfred appears lost in thought. You cannot sense straight away what he's thinking. Do not mind me, reader. It is simply that being here in this vicinity, it brings back a lot of memories and gives me much to ponder. I hid within those woods for many, many years, making preparations for our plan. I cast aside my raiments and became untraceable. There I waited for the plan to germinate, so it means a lot now to be here above that place at last. Quite the view, wouldn't you say, my girl? That's it's it's kind of fun that like he has a little telepathic conversation and then like out of courtesy says a different thing out loud. 
Um, all right, Cinder Root or Needle Field. I know we definitely landed in Cinder Root last time, so let's expand our horizons. Why don't we? Any new pages? Nope, that's fine. Probably been here somewhat recently. Hey, Wolfred. There. Wolfred appears to have finished sealing some sort of document. He smiles as he approaches you. Hello, my girl. Is this on my way out to make a drop? Report a bit of progress. Our supporters on the other side should like to know. It's not clear to you as yet exactly how Wolfred is able to communicate with agents in the Commonwealth. We have our ways of making certain that such messages manage to make their way to whom they need to reach. Most of the time, at least. It's not exactly the most dignified of methods, but the messenger imp is as hard-working as the rest of us, or dare I say more so. We can move on. Most imps lack the capacity to do that job. They, of course, cannot traverse the outer boundaries of the downside, but they can squeeze much closer than any of us. Wolfred offers to tell you more of this process. It seems like he has been using certain imps to relay messages to his agents of the Commonwealth for some time now. From that point, we depend on certain other memes. A trafficker like Ruki would likely be familiar with them. Then my agents intercept the messages as they arrive. The messages are coded in the off chance they reveal themselves before unwanted eyes, but even still, my agents put themselves in great peril there, supporting our cause and our plan. I could not ask for a more dedicated bunch. A shame we cannot meet them, separated as we are. If we succeed in our endeavors, it shall be thanks in no small part to them. They have identified hundreds of citizens grown loyal to our cause, found hidden corners where they can speak freely. Their goal is to grow in numbers while remaining safe. For we cannot resist the Commonwealth if too few citizens stand with us, whether due to apathy or fear or lack of willingness to see our nation as we do. Some of these agents I have known for many, many years long before my exile, since long before my exile. Many were former students from my days of teaching Commonwealth doctrine. It was clear then who among us did not take the common view. These days I reported them our progress, and they in turn report theirs back. From that assessment, I update the estimation of our planned success. Our chances of success increase substantially each time we liberate one of our own, but those loyal to us in the Commonwealth slowly gather strength regardless, knowing of our efforts. Thus do we inspire each other. Not unlike the dynamics which I see among the Nightwings here. Now, good afternoon then, reader. I have a delivery to make. He strides out the wagon bearing a sealed message. I like how it was like he offers to tell you more. I really didn't have a choice there. He just came out and said, I would have wanted to hear it no matter what. But um, still at 56%, I was hoping maybe the time jump would help us out there. Oh, wait, no. I waited until after the time jump to actually call it quits for last night. Um, yeah, because that's the same note as before as well. Uh, cool. Um, cool. Um... I know you said not to talk to you, but I kind of am going to talk to you. What brings you to me this time, my dear reader? Why are you doing this? Reaching out to me again, like this? I've been abandoned in this blasted rock more times than you could count, reader, and each time I have laughed it off. Like so. <laughs> she laughs. I fear it will be different this time. Before I, know that so before I knew that someone else would come around and pick up where the previous idiot left off, but now... She scoffs and falls silent for a time. Well, it seems that there may not be a next time after this, if what I'm to understand about the stars out there is even a half-truth. So then, I can anticipate an eternity of utter solitude, without even the blasted right to keep me company. Understand that, while I may be apparition in a glass to you, I yet retain a shred of self and do not happily foresee that outcome. And yet, you keep on coming back to me like this. If this is all in service of a torment, then you are most cruel, O oh, lovely reader. Commendably so, I have to say. So then, am I to understand you wish to spend more time with me thus, knowing full well the stars are soon to put an end to this little affair? As if, in answer to her question, you feel what seems to be the Beyonder Crystal itself. The Beyonder Crystal seems to be pulling you away. Stay with Sandra for a little longer. I'm not gonna... F if, 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 if it's... If this is not her choice... The ancient sorcery that sentenced Sandra to this crystal prison is not something to be trifled with. Yeah, F you! No, if Sandra wants to stick around, wants me to stick around, I'm gonna stick around. I know she just said you don't, you don't want me to stick around, but it feels like she's now being forced away, and I don't want that. You focus your mind and remain where you are there with Sandra in the confines of the Beyonder Crystal and remain there with her for some time. No words need to be exchanged between the two of you, and in the darkness there for once, she does not feel alone. Soon enough, however, she bids you to depart. You should leave these idiots of yours listless if you remain here for too long. Be gone already, and let me know if you have need of me. Take care of yourself, reader. 
That was sweet. I'm glad. I was I was nervous after the last conversation that like I was legit going to damage the friendship if I kept talking to her. I'm glad that was not the case. Um, that was a sweet interaction. Um, anyways, I don't think we have much else to do. So let's search for regents. Bertrude requires an assistant. The bog witch Big Bertrude knows much of things growing unseen throughout the land, including things residing here within the razor brambles of needle fields. We have made note of thy willing assistance. Come along then, reading one. Why she requests your company in such excursions only she could say, yet she does no such thing. She instead directs you to collect the foul ingredients she seeks. The regents seem to disappear into her robes and you return in silence. Later you note a new talisman has appeared among the group's possessions, bearing Bertrude's unmistakable mark. You acquired the Living Flame. It was crafted with care. While a bearer's pyre has more health, the bearer deals more damage. Same old bog dweller sorcery. Some old bog dweller sorcery keeps this bit of bottled flame from ever flaring out. Set it gently aside. Don't mess with that too much. Um, I don't think we'll be able to use that very much, although it depends what we can give Volfred, because I think he still needs a talisman. Um, that's pretty cool. There's a couple of... I, I forget which character has it, but one of the characters has that skill as well. Um, outside of the talisman. Uh, Alright, to the tempers. I swear to... I really hope it's not the... Uh, um, Wolfrid's old buddy. I hope we're actually facing the normal tempers this time. The wagon comes to a sudden stop after a near miss with someone or something that got right in its path. At first you see no sign of whomever or whatever it was, but then... A voice rings out from off to the side of your path. The friendly yet somehow aggravating tone leaves little room for question as to who it is. Uh, that voice sounded like, um, I'm forgetting his name, the shopkeeper. There he is, Falcon Run. Hey guys, uh, so maybe watch where you're going a bit more next time, I guess? You must have scared Dad half to death. I mean, just look at him. But it's good running into you like this because I got for you a really special deal. We got some pretty out there stuff on hand, and it's been slowing us a bit, to be completely honest here. Something about him, I don't know, but Dad just hasn't been himself. But, once we open shop, where these little numbers are gonna go flying off the shelves. And you can have first dibs. All you gotta do is give us a lift, because you're headed to the Glade of Lou, right? Just drop us off when you get there, okay? Black Wagon does not provide for you the most spacious accommodations, but it may have room enough for Falcon Ron, barely, at least for the short remainder of the trip. On the other hand, you sense a troubling energy from whatever strange artifacts he's transporting right now and whether or whether you should get involved. Um, I'm sorry. The thought of having to travel with Falcon Ron fills you with a nameless dread. I like how that description doesn't mention the artifacts at all. Just being with Ron is too much. Uh, the slug market proprietor seems to be in need of some assistance that you may as well provide. Yeah, get, get on in. I'll probably get a punishment for the curse that you're bringing on board, but we're still going to be friendly. Their fellow exiles exchange cautious looks. You invite Falcon Ron to climb aboard. Oh, great. Thanks, guys. I'll just uh, squeeze right in. Just... He does not. Dad! Come on, put your back into it already. Eventually, Falcon Ron manages to get on board as you prepare to set forth again. Falcon Ron joined you. Welcome him aboard. For now. <laughs> you just hear his little grumbles. I love it. What a... What a... What a character that should be a nothing character that's still really fun. I love Falcon Ron. After what felt like an interminable trip during which Falcon Ron did not even once cease to speak of matters relevant only to him, you reach your destination. Anyways, thanks guys, and remember what I said. These thingers I got here, you got dibs on them if you come visit me and dad. That is, now we'll be going, so be seeing you, okay? Whether from Falcon Ron's ceaseless dribble or the ill effects of his cargo, everyone is left feeling out of sorts. Less, minus five glory, that is quite a bit. Um, try not to think about it. Oh well, being friendly is more important than being good at sports. I stand by that statement even in real life, which may be controversial. You approach Bertrude just as she has finished polishing the various bottles, flasks, and duck vials that your fellow exiled have collected during your travels through the downside. The evidence of thy travails, how brazenly you put them on display. Ye tempt these lands to swallow thee. She lets out a long breath. Nonetheless, these trinkets stir our memories, not merely of these lands, but of the country whence we came. 
No, reading one, that we are here because of Sandalwood. We met him long ago within the southern bogs. He offered many courtesies, and in exchange we found agreeable. We sought then certain regents necessary to our studies of the heavens and the earth, and he, he knew where to procure them. In exchange, we were to boil for him our finest inks, a certain recipe notorious yet secret. Its stain could never be removed. Oh, but the Commonwealth misliked it. "'Twas then we first began collecting samples of the regions of the downside, "'for Sandalwood was ever true to his word. "'Long had we studied this accursed place, Back Basin, Back Basin, Black Basin, "'the chaos of the deathless tempest, "'the richness of the bogs of flagging hands, "'lands so far away, and yet they called to us. If Molten Milithae was able to traverse the downside in its entirety an age ago, then surely t'was not beyond reckoning that we could do the same. Furthermore... But she hesitates. It matters not, reading one. Thou hast indulged our tales for long enough, for now. She slithers away without further explanation. She seems reluctant to discuss the circumstances of her past with Wolfred, yet you sense that she is here by choice. Uh, what do we got? I feel like there's not going to be too much that we didn't already immediately just learn. If you needed someone cursed or guarantees a fortune on a big day or to consort with elder patrons such as Ophem Unburied or Marxist Needle Eyes, you would go see Big Bertrude. She's one of the most infamous alchemists of her day, and piled her trade right under the Commonwealth's nose without regard. Ironically, it was a modest-sounding request for printing inks that ultimately got her into trouble, resulting in her exile. In the downside, her reputation preceded her, and she resumed her practice. Ophim unburied, he died repenting and did not linger in his grave for very long at all. Marcus Needleize is widely held that nothing beneath the heavens is beneath his notice. Cool. Uh... Say willful disregard, conspiracy was accomplished in the legal standard press operation because of Wilfred. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um Let's go shopping and then I actually have to go turn my laundry over real quick. Oh, hey guys, thanks again for helping me and dad back there. We really owe you one, and so, as I promised, I got something really, really good in stock for you right here. He pauses for dramatic effect then. He reveals to you several outer artifacts, a black hoof, a black heart, and a black claw. Cursed Talisman. The bearer has 100% more stamina than usual, but cannot grasp the orb. One of the three scattered remnants of a thrice-cursed demon who roamed the downside in a state of madness. Um, after getting banished, bearer either returns with infinite stamina or as a fast-moving howler. What the F does that even mean? I'm trying to remember if Howler is like a certain type of, uh, like a certain class, but I don't remember. The bear's aura remains while grasping the orb, but cannot be cast. I imagine that means it cannot be cast even while holding the orb. But that's pretty good. I mean, that one's actually not bad. They emanate with energy that cannot possibly be completely healthy. Nice, huh? You guys, you got first dibs on these bad boys, and I can tell you what, they're gonna be, f they're gonna go fast. Um, no, not that one. The claw. Claw's only 23 coins, dang. Um, that being said, like I said earlier, we have plenty of good talismans already. That's the thing. Um, this goes down here, out of memory. Yeah, we'll leave it for now. You guys didn't see nothing, huh? Might get that black oak later, but, um... Because, like, that would be rad for Jodariel. That would make Actually, that would make Jodariel, like, insanely uh, powerful. Um... But I also just kind of like, I know it doesn't really have any effect on gameplay, but I kind of like the role-playing element of everyone gets their special talisman and just holds on to that. So I don't know if I'm going to end up doing that, but you know who could probably use a thousand wisdom, and I remembered that I can give them that? 
Uh, Volfred. Oh, that's actually not as much as I thought it would be. It's been a while since my last outings in the rites. Begging for your continued patience as I recollect the way. Alright! Legacies of Old Hundred Mines. Rites Mastery is enhancing a sap's ability to spawn saplings and protect his triumphant. Wherever traveled loose Clarion, he planted his roots and spread his wisdom to all those who would listen. Guardian Sapling. If Wolford is banished, the sapling shall automatically spawn near his pyre until he returns. That's pretty nice. He said that the strength and wisdom of the ages always followed in the root steps of loose Clarion. Grasp of the Philosopher. Right Master is enhancing the Sap's for its ability to persevere in a right. The words of Hundred Minds helped his kin make peace with the many mysteries and dangers they faced. Once per right, if Wolford's adversaries extinguish his pyre, it is restored by plus ten instead. Um... And it stacks with uh, things with similar effects. Interesting. It was Luce Green who ushered in the modern age and showed his people that a flame need not be feared. That's pretty cool, but here's the thing. I feel like I've never really come close to losing and then won. I have only won pretty handily or lost very heavily. Um, so I feel like getting a plus 10 is not going to make it or break it, you know? Um, whereas that instant sapling spawn, that's pretty helpful for just automatic defense if Wolfred ever gets got. Um, so, honestly, if the second tier skills for this sapling thing aren't very good, I might go back over to this tree. Um, but... I feel like, on average, this is going to come in handy more, so I'm going to do that. It's just good defense. Now, you do need a talisman, my friend, so let's see what we got. Um, extra money. We really don't need money at this point, I don't think. Especially because those cursed talismans weren't even very expensive. Um, the rings were nice, but again, like I don't, I don't think I have enough characters without useful talismans that I would actually equip both rings at once, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, like, I would, <laughs> the only thing would be if, and it's, this is already tricky because you know I'm trying to get with Jodario, but if there was extra dialogue unlocked by giving Jodario and Pamitha the two rings, because there's the description that specifically says that it's usually for lovers, um, that would be really fun. That being said, the talismans seem to have had very little effect on story, so I'm not expecting that to happen. Um, which is why I'm not going for that. But if that were a thing that actually happened, that would be incredible. And this game is incredible, so honestly, if it were to happen, I wouldn't even be that surprised. I would just be heavily impressed. Okay, so money, money, um, chance to return immediately. That one's really good. Quicker or more damage. I, we're still going to get this instant comeback one. That one is really good. And so now, it, whenever Volfrid goes... He either comes back immediately or at least spawns a buddy immediately. Um, so that's, 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 I like that. That's useful. Uh, cool. Um, what time is it? Yeah, I'm going to go move my laundry over real quick. Also, I was thinking, I forgot to mention this, but um, Vorfrit said that we have like hundreds of civilians to our cause. The Commonwealth seems like a really big place. I can't... We've gotten almost no sense of scale. But, like, hundreds of civilians could be, like, nothing. <laughs> I don't know if that means anything. Uh, also, right as I got ready to start playing again, Game Frozen is probably about to crash. So that's great timing. I should have done my laundry during a, a crash. Um, but alas, here we are. Let's just wait for this to play its course. Like, I'm, I live near Chicago, and even if I was part of a plan that was trying to overthrow something the size of Chicago, even then, hundreds of civilians, I'd be like, I don't know if it's going to be enough, man. From what I can tell, Logan Paul has not died in his fight with Floyd Mayweather yet. Guess the uh, schedule is running behind. <laughs> 